prepping in the UK is fast on the rise with people from all walks of life looking into this. Even the mainstream media are talking about it. And as demand goes up, so will the price of supplies and gear that you'll need. Add to that inflation, shrinkflation, sky high interest rates and supply issues. You could soon be too late to start. So where on earth do you begin? What do you stock up on? What should you be preparing for? In this video, I'll show you how you can start prepping immediately using a simple strategy to tailor make your preps. Hi, this is Everyday Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Preparedness, even in the UK, is a very big subject. And when you're starting out, it can be a challenge to know where to start. When I first got started, I didn't really know what to prepare for. So I started making a list of disasters and events that I knew had happened around the world and some that hadn't happened. And I started trying to prepare for them all at once. What I didn't realise was there was a much more simple system and one that I now use to make sure I'm prepared for pretty much any scenario. In this video, I'm going to share strategies with you that will help you to get started prepping on a clear path that doesn't break the budget and gives you some peace of mind so you're prepared for many eventualities and emergencies. If you're new to the channel, my name is Steve and I'm a prepper and outdoor enthusiast. I'll be making videos about prepping from a UK perspective with some practical tutorials, especially solar power, which is one of my favourite subjects. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you like this video and want to see more content like this. Prepping in the UK is very different to prepping in the US when it comes to defence. Now this video isn't about defence, but I just wanted to touch on this for a moment. My understanding of the Second Amendment is an American citizen can possess a firearm for the purposes of their own self-defence. Now in the UK, while we are able to possess firearms under licence, they're not to be used for self-defence purposes so therefore hobbies or for sport. In fact, the only legal item that we can publicly carry on our person for self-defense is one of these. This is a personal attack alarm and it delivers a high-pitched sound up to 150 decibels. And what it's designed to do is to repel or stop an attacker. Now, as far as I'm concerned, something like that is just gonna irritate an attacker even more and make them just wanna shut you up more quickly. So I may do another video about aspects of defense but for the time being, all I'd recommend is if you're in the UK, get yourself trained, try and stay fit and active as best you can, practice good situational awareness and secure your home. Now I started out prepping, spending a ton of money on gear that I'll probably end up never using because I was just reacting to world events and not following a specific strategy. They certainly don't teach prepping at school. So even though I developed lots of skills and had lots of survival equipment, I didn't really know what I was prepping for. Now when the lockdowns happened, everything changed. The impact was huge for me and my family and people around me. There was lots of confusion, all kinds of conflicts and potential chaos. I realised then that although I didn't really know what I'd been preparing for, I had lots of supplies that I was able to use during the lockdown to save me queuing up in supermarkets and queuing up at fuel stations to get my petrol for my car um, because I had some preps on site. But this certainly wasn't what I was expecting to have to use them for. So it was great, but it was a bit haphazard. So during this time, I developed what I now call the day in the life method for prepping. But before you apply this method, you need to have an understanding of some basic survival principles. With regard to survival, the rule of three states that you can survive three minutes without air, three hours without shelter in a harsh environment, three days without water, and three weeks without food. The first step of my approach to prepping is that I have backup for all of these, because if one of those is compromised, just one, it's game over, obviously. And in addition to what I'm about to cover, a comprehensive first aid kit is a must and knowing how to use it. Keeping it as simple as we can, a solution for all these essentials could be air, some kind of face mask, ideally a gas mask, but they're not cheap. But I would say the most likely situation you're going to end up in is where you're going to have smoking inhalation risk or possibly toxic gas. You might better filter out with several bandanas or neck scarves and this, this kind of thing uh, that you just put over your head, put around your face and some sort of eye protection as well. And that's a good start for a low cost. It's better to have something rather than nothing at all. For shelter, a tent or a tarp or both, tent pegs, guy ropes, paracord, something to put it all into shape. Uh, very, very handy if you're forced outdoors for any reason. Water, very important. So the general rule is to have one gallon of water per person per day, which the a UK gallon is about four and a half litres. A US gallon, I think, is slightly less, so we'll go with more. So if you wanted to ensure you've got a week's worth, seven days worth of water for one person, you're going to need around 30 litres, about seven gallons. So if you imagine a, a two litre bottle of Coke, you're going to need 15 of those just for one person for a week. Imagine then making enough put aside for a family of four for maybe two weeks or three weeks or a month, six months. 
You have to remember as well that one litre of water weighs one kilo. So if you're storing hundreds of kilos of water, maybe in your loft, it may not be the best place to have it if you don't want your ceiling to come down. So to strike a balance with this, you might want to start learning about how to source water elsewhere and how to purify water and, and filter it and uh, boil it, get rid of parasites, that kind of thing. Because eventually you're going to run out of water if there's a long term problem with the water supply. There's some great resources online about this and also some really good books. I'd recommend the SAS Survival Handbook. I've got a copy here. I'll put a link in the description below. So that book tells you how to source water in all sorts of ways using really basic equipment. So when you're sourcing your water elsewhere, this is where purification and filtering and boiling water is essential. So you can get water purification tablets online fairly cheaply. Each tablet will purify up to 10 litres of water. Also have something that you can use off grid, i.e. You know, not your gas supply, to heat water to a boiling point for a couple of minutes so that you can boil out any parasites or impurities. And another handy tool is, is a filter, something like a soya filtration system. The Life Straw is another one. Um, they are quite pricey, but they will filter thousands of litres of water. But these filters can make the water in a dirty puddle completely drinkable. In the UK, we're lucky enough to have a ton of rain. It's always raining. So keep a tarp, a brand new tarp, wrapped up and kept separate in your go bag. And and you can use this for collecting water. You can rig it up so that uh, it collects water and it trickles down into a, a bucket or saucepan. And that way it's not going to collect. If you're, if you're relying on rainwater from your roof, it could go through bird droppings which have other parasites. And uh, at least with a clean tarp, you're at less risk of having some kind of parasite. The other book I'd recommend is the uh, Survival Medical Handbook, uh, which is here. You can get this online and covers in there all kinds of injuries from gunshot wounds to purifying water which is why I mentioned it now. Very very comprehensive book. Now before I explain the day in the life method there is one extra step that I need to cover. If you're finding these tips helpful remember to subscribe to this channel to stay updated with more prepping tips like this. Now we come to food. Beginning storing food is fairly straightforward so when you go shopping if you just chuck a couple of extra tins each time don't uh, don't panic buy or bulk buy attract attention to yourself but a few extra tins here and there you'll stock it up fairly quickly they store for ages check the dates on them a lot of tins will store for sort of three four years and then you just rotate them eat you know buy stuff that you're going to eat so that you can dip into them as and when the dates start to get close to expiry and then just replace them as you use them so things like tinned meats tinned fruits vegetables fish soups are great and stock up on some rice and pasta because they store for a long time in the right container so that's a cheap way to start you can also buy mres or meals ready to eat which are kind of what the military use and uh, I think astronauts even use them as well so that they're, but they're they're packaged up and the way they're packaged and preserved they can last for up to 25 years so they're they're great for prepping really good but they cost a lot more than uh, a few tins here and there now unfortunately when food is prepared for long-term storage the additives and the extra salt and uh, and that kind of stuff can take away from all the vitamins and minerals in the in the food so it is again essential that you have a supply of vitamins multivitamins at least they're fairly cheap at the moment so it's a good thing to stock up on and these bottles you know they'll have like several months worth in each bottle so you just get several bottles of those and it'll last you a long time and that'll, that'll be a good way of topping up your nutrition again the same with water you eventually your food's going to run out so it's a good idea to start learning about foraging looking out for plants and mushrooms and uh, berries and fruits and things like that you might be able to find in the wild if your food supplies start to dwindle and it would also give you some fresh food which is full of vitamins and nutrients that you would need to support eating from tins. I've got a couple of excellent guides to mushroom picking and I'll tell you what, the mushrooms that you find in the wild in the UK are so much better than what you find in the supermarkets. They taste really, really good. So it's a great skill to have. So once you've done all of this and you've started prepping all your food and your water, you're ready for the next step. And this is to start gearing your prepping around your personal circumstances. And what I mean by that is you've started to put stuff together that's going to hopefully serve you in the event of a major disaster that's going to affect basically everybody in your area for maybe a prolonged period of time but now you can start making prepping specific to your own situation so if there are events that disrupt just your situation that you're not caught out i define prepping for me as being prepared and equipped to deal with anything any situation or event that would disrupt my current way of life i emphasize current way of life because things change lifestyle changes your routine changes so it's a good idea to review your routine now and then especially after a big change to make sure there's nothing else that could be vulnerable to disruption 
option. So my day in the life method is where I take my routine and I look at it, look at a day, typical day from all the way through the whole routine. So from when I get up in the morning to when I go to bed at night, everything I do in between, all the products and items that I use and, and I list those all out first off in my mind and then I'll go back and I'll, I'll list every single thing down so that I know if there was anything key in there that could disrupt me or if I was without it for maybe two days, three days, how, how would it affect my routine? How would it affect my daily life? And then I prep accordingly. Now it can look pretty complicated as I go through each step, but when you do it for yourself, you realize how easy it is because it's all about you and you know your own routine. So the way I would look at my routine would be something like this. I wake up in the morning, my phone goes off because I use my phone alarm. How's my phone charged? Oh, it's a battery. I charge it through the mains. I get up, then I'll use the toilet. It's connected to the main sewage system and it's got a close couple system for flushing and the system fills with a mains connection, mains water. So then I'll put my contact lenses in and I, I purchase those online and I get about three months worth at a time. So then I'll go downstairs and I'll have some coffee and that's with filter coffee through a machine which is mains powered and the coffee I buy in the supermarket. I'm going into detail on each of these little things and hopefully you'll get a feel for where I'm going with this. So I might be sitting in the living room having my coffee. I would possibly have the light on. It's uh, pretty dark in the mornings at the moment. My light is on mains electricity and then I'll be going through my phone, checking for emails, etc. So I'll be using the internet, which is connected via Wi-Fi through my router, which is mains powered. And then before I go to work, I'll go and have a shower. My water system for the shower is a gravity fed system and the water is heated. I have a hot water storage tank and it's heated by a gas boiler that also runs an electric pump connected to the mains. I then get dressed. Sometimes I'll put some clean clothes on, which were washed in the washing machine, which is connected to the mains and possibly, especially in winter time, dried in the dryer, which cost a fortune. I might add, which is also connected to the mains. If I can be bothered, I might shave. Got a rechargeable shaver, which charges off the mains. And, and then I'll moisturize. Every man got to moisturize. And that I purchase in the supermarket. Then I'll go and have some breakfast. I usually have eggs on toast. Uh, we do homemade bread in a bread maker. I'll talk about that in another video, actually, because it's uh, solar powered, mine is. And then I'll have some toast, which is toasted in the toaster, which is on the mains supply. Then before I leave the house, I'll clean my teeth. I've got an electric toothbrush, uh, rechargeable, charges up on the mains. I'll grab some snacks, usually purchased from the supermarket, and then I'll head off to work. I use the car, which runs on petrol. It has four wheels with air in the tyres. I usually buy lunch at work, I pop into a local shop and I pay for my lunch using contactless on Google Pay. In the evening I return home, I might cook an evening meal either using the microwave if it's perhaps a baked potato, 800 watts connected to the mains or I might use the gas oven or hob uh, which is gas as well. After dinner I'll play around on the PC for a bit that's mains operated. I might watch some TV. That's mains operated. Then I'll go to bed, maybe read a book, check my phone again using Wi-Fi and rinse and repeat. So I have simplified my routine or you might say I've complicated it because you wouldn't normally go about your day-to-day -day activities thinking like that. But you get the picture. And some days are different. Obviously weekends are different. But you'll see a recurring theme there and that is mains electricity. And there's, there's the thing. When you go through your own routine, you'll find a common thread. Probably for most people it is electricity or maybe petrol if you're working around vehicles a lot. Some kind of power source or or fuel, um, but certainly electricity. Everything is electric these days. Every device we use is powered by electricity. So for me personally, if the mains electricity or power supply to our house was to go down, and even if it was just our house, that would be massively disruptive. You're not going to get people delivering bottles of electricity in the street. You know, if you're without power, it's going to be quite debilitating. So when I first went through this exercise, I realized that that was my major vulnerability, apart from all the other things that I prepare for. So I've got my water, I've got my food, got my shelter, I've got my means to cover my face in the event of smoking inhalation and that kind of stuff. But I'm, I needed some kind of power backup if the mains was to go down for at least more than more than a day or a couple of days. Now I know that you know, some of you might say, well, if the power went out for more than a few days or about a week, there'd be a lot more things that we'd have to worry about than charging your electric toothbrush. And, and I, I completely get that. You're absolutely right. But you've got to start somewhere, right? So I hope that never happens. I hope I, hope I never have to experience a power outage, a national power outage. But if it was just my street, then at least I might have some power, might have some lighting, I might be able to still connect to the internet. So there might be certain services and facilities that are still running that I just can't connect to because my house isn't powered. So if I have a, have a solar power setup, which is what I have, I can run all of that. I can run my PC, I can run laptops, I can charge all my phones, my radios, 
I can, you know, I can run a lot of things. I can even run a small washing machine. We've got a camping washing machine. I can run off my solar now. So it's, it's very versatile. And I must remember there's one more tip I've got to tell you. Um, but my next video, I'm going to cover, I'm going to do a practical session on setting up really, really quickly and on a really low budget, uh, a simple solar power system that you can then scale up according to whatever your needs are. The tip I was going to say about with your home that's essential is in the event of any emergency, you may want to know where to shut off the mains electricity, the mains gas, if you have it, and the mains water. That's really essential knowledge. Know where your stop cock is, know where, you, where your circuit breaker is and all that kind of stuff. Wherever you live, that's you need to know those things just in case there's no one else around that, that you can call on. Now, if you found the information in this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can get more information like this about prepping and practical solutions like setting up off-grid solar power systems. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Stay prepared. Mm -hmm.